Hi there, and welcome to another edition of the 1% Better Podcast with your host, Rob O'Donoghue. Hello there, welcome to another show, another episode of the 1% Better Podcast. This one is going to be a little bit different. Um, I think I've said that a bit over the last few episodes. I've done a few solo runs over the holidays and wasn't planning to do this one, but the circumstances came this way, I decided to to do it. Normally release an episode on a Friday and had hoped to yesterday, uh, today's Saturday as I record this, it's the 12th of January, but for a few reasons that I'll go into uh, a couple of them, I, I wasn't able to. Um, the most prominent and most important of those was the fact that my son Jake, who I probably touched on previous episode of maybe the last few weeks or certainly on social shared some pictures he was born a month ago and he came home this week he was born after 34 weeks and two days so he was six weeks or so premature or pre preterm i guess is the is, is the term i've learned and the great news is he's doing good and he's home as i said th- tuesday of this week so that's been absolutely the priority and probably will be um, very much so over the next while as he gets familiar with uh, the real world and we myself and paula get comfortable uh, if that's a word we can use with a newborn looking after him but the reason i wanted to touch on him uh, is because of i guess the, the the last eight weeks four before he was born and, and the four after um have been extremely tough and the message i suppose i wanted to get out of talking about this was how how meditation actually has has, has been very beneficial and has helped me massively over uh, this eight week period and i know i bang the drum about meditation and mindfulness a fair bit through the podcast through the people i talk to uh, that I've interviewed over the last two years or so but I guess now more than ever I, I really believe the value that it can bring uh, and has brought certainly to me over the last while and I wanted to just touch on it to give you maybe a more real world perspective one from for myself um, that has come up over that period of time so as I said Jake's four weeks old he was born um, a month ago but the month prior to that, my partner Paula had been in in hospital because we were concerned potentially over anything that might happen uh, with with the arrival of Jake uh, early. I um, won't go into any real detail there, other than to say that for those four weeks we were, you know, certainly worried about how things would turn out. From the twelfth of November, I was actually in Austin, Texas, uh, with work. I had arrived in on the Sunday night from Belgrade, where I was at a PMI conference. It was a kind of a busy weekend. I arrived in Texas, and was in the office on the Monday morning, just about three hours or so at this stage, and got a call to say to come home because Paulo had gone into hospital, and I, I needed to be there. Absolutely, I did, and. The brilliant thing with work was that they were obviously very, very supportive. So I was able to leave instantly, fly back. 24 hours later, I was in the in the hospital and, you know, we were learning day by day how, how things, uh, as things evolved, how <coughs> serious the situation, I suppose, was. For that 24 hours, not knowing exactly how things would turn out, I absolutely went to crazy dark places places where my mind um was wandering and it wasn't necessarily positive no matter how much uh i tried to be positive it was it was difficult but without without a doubt what i'd been practicing over the last few years in 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 meditation and mindfulness had a massive help or impact on my ability to prevent my self from getting trapped or caught with those negative or scary thoughts I, when, when, when now i look back or even at the time i started to look back in earlier years when i was younger maybe 10 or 15 years ago when family members are sick or when when somebody some, somebody passed away the build up to that the feeling of 
fear and being gripped by it and not knowing what was going to happen and allowing it again allowing your your um your thoughts get hold be negative turning into feelings and emotions and, and getting that cycle going i certainly was very very <laughs> unaware how how bad it was w- with that in the past um but over the last few years it's something that i become much more aware of and when these scenarios come up or when a time of crisis or fear in whatever part of my life comes up now i certainly have developed an ability to to notice it and take that little step back from it the the quote that i mentioned maybe a few times or other guests stayed around stimulus and, and response and creating that gap the one uh, victor frankel i think is credited with from his book man's search for meaning that is something that had come up to me a lot over over the last while and creating that little bit of extra space before you react before you get maybe hooked into that negative thought cycle has um has been something that has been very very helpful for me over that period of time and and I, again i know I, I write a bit about mindfulness and try to put real world examples in there this one couldn't have been any more real or more uh, important and not saying at all that it wasn't i was able to quell it and, and not face that kind of fear but it was allowing me to be the observer of it in, in some ways and not to catastrophize as much and not to really get into a bad destroyed self-destructive state and you had to be positive you had to try and find areas to be optimistic about and and obviously uh, now looking back everything looks to be pretty good and pretty positive which is, which is great it was really my mindfulness in action and yeah without having practiced that for the last couple of years pretty much on a daily basis i do not think i would have got through that period in the way i have and and the message there is absolutely practice meditation practice mindfulness commit to doing it and hopefully that when something does come along if you've committed to it doing this enough repeating practicing deliberately doing it every day it will help it will bring value it'll bring benefit to your ability to stay in the moment not get carried away with those negative thoughts and just in general be be i suppose is probably the the best way to say it what i had been using pretty much every day over the period of time the app insight timer there's a tip here uh, insight timer is an app um and i'm looking at it right now you can get in the app store you can get in ios and android devices i'm sure it's free and um there's something like fifteen thousand free meditations on it um I had got into the <coughs> excuse me. I got into meditations that David G had been putting up there earlier this year, and um, he's a guest on the podcast earlier the year as well. Uh, over the last eight or so weeks, I've been using one or two of them every morning, and they helped massively just to kind of get myself mentally in a in a good place, emotionally in a good place at the start of the day every day. Um, before i maybe went over to to the hospital to to check up and see how things were going and yeah i would say if that's an entry point for you to look at getting on to meditation and free access to meditations that's a very good app you, you you've probably heard of other ones but that's definitely one that i would recommend those four weeks were really tough got through it and then the last four weeks since jake has been born have been getting better every day thankfully everything worked out well he was born in in a healthy state uh although quite small uh being six weeks premature but over the last four weeks he's he started to to get bigger and bigger and and as i said he's now at home and we're we're looking after him and i'm recording this on sunday morning 1 a 12 12 o'clock just gone uh and i'm probably gonna go to bed soon uh but wake up very shortly afterwards uh, because of his night sleeping or lack thereof currently but anyway the message there meditation do it practice it 
and use one of the apps to, to kind of help you along as a starting point it will bring you something positive when you absolutely need it so that's the the whole area around fear and meditation and a message i wanted to share the next piece of this solo show is around dry 18 so you may know a goal i took on for 2018 was um to not drink alcohol for the entire year for the 365 days and i'm happy to say i'm happy to report that uh, i was able to complete that without um breaking it and and to be fair where are we now the 12th to 13th of january just gone into it still not uh still not back um drinking alcohol uh still on on dry january 2019 and taking it bit by bit and seeing where it will go um i put out a final post of the whole journey last friday um posted it on linkedin i'll have a link with this it's on the website it's kind of a look back over the last few months um as opposed to the entire year and then also looking at kind of the future call to actions ctas as i've learned what they are um and lessons i've I've taken from the entire journey um I've tried to look at conditioning and how I've kind of reconditioned or reprogrammed myself in some ways to have a different relationship with alcohol, which I didn't expect it to change as as it has. Um, And taking a kind of a meta view here, this is not just about keeping up beer for a year. It's also, you know, taking on something or or giving up something else for for any duration of time. There's, There's lessons to be learned from it, the approaches that I took hopefully are are ones you could take something from and apply them in your own goal setting for the year i have learned an awful lot not only about setting the goal and reaching it and you know getting the outcome but very much like what i talked about earlier in the year around podcasting there's been so many unexpected benefits from from doing it and definitely the case uh, has again been proven with um dry edin i mentioned a quote in the post i put out on friday from richard branson i listened to a podcast with richard branson and tim ferris i think it was around september october of 2017 and it, it, it stood out with, for me at the time where when when ferris was asking him about alcohol or partying maybe Richard had said that he can almost trace back every bad night or every negative feeling or emotion that he has, um, I'm paraphrasing badly here, um, to alcohol, to having consumed some alcohol the day before, the night before or whenever and he just you know tries to cut it to a minimum I remember at the time I was actually in the gym listening to, to that and it stuck with me and it was obviously before dry eating began. And when, when I was putting this final one together, I searched that out and, and found it and put the quote in there because I think, uh, you know, it is true as I look back on my own life, um, certainly some good nights came from boozing and having the crack and sessions and weddings and parties, etc. But a lot of the negative feelings that I have had in the past have come as a consequence the day after or, or a few days later to um to drinking too much without doubt and in the last 365 days plus 12 or so those uh negative days have been fewer and when they were around at least i knew i couldn't put put the finger of blame towards beer and and then they didn't ever seem as uh, uncontrollable as they had in the past so the blog post is one that I would hope you uh, check out. It's been out in the last couple of days. I've got a lot of good feedback, a lot of people saying well done, and certainly that's lovely to hear. It's not really the purpose of the um, the post to get any plaudits for it. It's more to share what uh, I learned, and I'm sure my friend Richie McCaffrey, who did it with me, hopefully has learned some stuff as well, and put in some kind of high level steps that you might take for any specific goal you're taking that you have in mind for this year and make it one that has emotion 
tied to it which is very very important so that you're motivated to follow through with it um so that's that final post and and as the year went by um i think overall i've did about six seven posts relating to the journey from why i did it at the start to things i learned after a hundred days to getting halfway there and things like dutch courage and other topics i'm actually assembling all of those posts together and um, with a bit of an introduction and a kind of a, a, a close out and it will form um again it kind of sounds a bit strange to say it, but it'll form like an ebook that um i will put out at some point later this month um again might be of value to some group i know alcohol concern in the uk who had connected in with me early on have expressed interest in just sharing it putting it on their website for folks that are doing similar stuff i know there's a lot of no one year no beer type um events and groups you can sign up to um this is not <laughs> me trying to uh, make any money out of it i think um obviously it's going to be free on the site i think you can get a kindle version uh when i when i put it out on amazon they may have to charge a 99 cent or i don't know if i can get it up there for zero but i haven't done it before so we'll see yeah so if you sign up to the newsletter i will send out a, a pdf version of of the ebook the assembled manuscript uh, if that's what you want to call it when um when it's all done and later this month i'll, I'll share that yeah dry 18 is done into dry 19 now and as a lot of people have joked with me now that i have a kid in my life um it'll be an enforced dry 19 one where i probably have no real choice uh at all even though i may want to uh, be driven to drink but at the moment i don't really have any desire to do so but watch this space if i do it'll certainly be more one that uh will be a, a get to or a want to as opposed to kind of a have to uh, in awkward social settings which might have been the case in the past and again that's something i learned and wrote about in one of the, the posts about introversion and the like okay so that's that's dryadeen my plug for for the content there and hopefully something you can get something from um just a couple of other things to call out for for season three of the podcast i am planning over the next few weeks to record a number of episodes i'm going to be on paternity leave which is an amazing thing to uh to get a couple of weeks off i'm going to spend them nice and quiet at home but oh, during that period of time i'll probably get the opportunity to record some new episodes for for next season i am planning to play around with how how we release so at the moment you're probably subscribed to the one percent better show on, on itunes and um and thank you for doing so i have the 864 show as well what i'm probably going to do is streamline them and have them all under one channel uh, it'll be this one but i will release an episode of the 864 out on this as well and at least then for me it'll just be easier to put out shows more frequently on the one channel and from a, a listener's perspective the feedback i've got it can be kind of confusing and having to, to sign up to two different shows is something you need to think of i suppose but uh so that's something in the works won't happen for a while yet i still have a few more shows for season two to release i would imagine this one i think two more after that um and then take a few weeks off as i um just keep recording for for season three very excited about the list of guests that i've reached out to some have confirmed some are coming back to me with potential dates as to when we can um record and that will hopefully bring things to the, the next level really looking forward to exploding the listenership in 2019 that's really where you guys can come in and help me out i think from 2018 to sorry 2017 to 2018 it's gone up 40 percent and now i'm hoping that again with your help with your ability to like and share and tell somebody about the show that will bring it to whatever number i don't i don't really have a number targeted in mind i just know that the more help i can get from listeners the more chance it can be um heard and hopefully have an impact on 
more and more people because that's uh, again what it's all about sharing some learnings uh, some lessons and hopefully encouraging people to take action to, to practice some of these techniques and, and ideas and make them better and bring them towards a better place a better um, mindset a better well-being uh, a better whatever that might be um, depending on obviously on the team or the topic of, of the show at, at that time uh, hopefully there'll be something of value within there for for everyone over the the coming months okay so kind of going to wrap it up just again the things i wanted you to take away from this episode is meditation mindfulness real life experience i've gone through over the last few weeks and it's been very very much a, a go-to um helped me change how i looked at things helped me separate myself from the catastrophe that my brain or my thoughts were telling me and and hopefully the that example is something that resonates or, or something you can relate to yeah try try and download an app and and do something positive with it um just small bits every day will, will absolutely make a benefit over time the the dry 19 uh, sorry dry 18 story is all about goal setting and things that you can achieve and as i said like the podcasting journey so much value can come from following the path of a goal and so many things you'll learn that you never thought you would come along that journey as well obviously it's great to cross the finish line and complete it but in many many instances the stuff you learn along the way will be more valuable than finishing it and that's although it sounds cheesy and you'd hear it a thousand times i've never believed it more than i do now and hopefully that comes across um as genuine because um because it is and and then just finally again a call out please do help me 3x 4x the listenership of the show in the year to come because that's what it's all about trying to help others and if you have a friend that you think might enjoy listening to it or watching some of the one minute monday posts or reading a blog send them to the site send them my way get them to reach out to me follow me on one of the socials um that's really the key motivator for me and the thing that keeps me going keeps me excited to do it i'd say about seven or eight times today i try to talk myself out of doing this episode and just for so many reasons why would i bother what good would come out of it blah 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 that fear that imposter syndrome that inner critic inner gremlin inner devil is there all the time um but now i'm nearly done with it and i'm pretty happy with um the fact that i've gone through it and uh, even though it is 20 past 12 and way past my bedtime um but i think uh it's worth doing because for nothing else even for me just to get my thoughts around it together and talk through it has been enjoyable and cathartic maybe is that the right word i hope you got something from it and i shall leave it there i will be releasing a new episode next friday and i hope that will be one of interest the one i have in mind talks about a bit of an esoteric topic which is past life regression experiences uh, with a very fascinating guy called doug buckingham so i'm hoping to put that one out we recorded it a good while ago but i've never got around to releasing it and i'll hopefully have that out towards the end of next week and so many new episodes to come as well i'm excited and there you go so sorry for the the ramble tonight um might sound a little bit quieter than normal that's because i don't want to wake up jake thanks for listening and please do get in touch if you have any feedback for for me for the shows for topics for next season one of the things i didn't mention now that i'm rambling I'm, it's all coming back to me for season three of the podcast i'm looking at focusing in on specific topics for like mini series uh, this is done in other podcasts for sure as well but i'm passionate about leadership and i want to do kind of four or five episodes in a row around leadership obviously emotional intelligence is huge for me and th those two things can't really be separated but i'm going to try and do a, a mini series of eq um some of the guests i've lined up for next year is around communication or our around communication experts so i'm going to talk in kind of a series around that and we'll have random shows as well and we'll have the 864 
but if you have a suggestion for a show a guest always ask this i know only one percent of you listening will actually come back to me with with suggestions um, and feedback you know maybe we can book that trend and get it up higher but that's really over to you i'd love you to to take a few minutes to to do that and if you don't want to do that just tell somebody else about the show and that's it so i'll leave it there thanks for listening hope you got something from it have a great week and good luck